on behalf of the department of english of shri shankarlal sundarbar session jain college for women prayer is a rays of the sun and gleam of the moon sharing on us with hope and dreams it is the positivity in each of us i request ms brinda to lead us in prayer namo hari antanam namo sedanam namo ayariyanam namo ajayanam namo lohe savasahunam eso panchanamo karo sarva papapanasano mangalanamche sabesam padamam havai mangalam padamam havai mangalam tamil thai vaalthu neerarum kadalodutha nilamadande kelilulugum சீராரும் வதனம் என திகழ் பரத கண்டம் இது தெக்கனமும் அது சிறந்த திராவிடனல் திருநாளும் தக்க சிறப்பினை நுதலும் தரித்தனரும் திலகமுமே அத்திலக வாசனை போல் அனைத்துலகும் இன்பமுர ியும் புகழ் மணக்க இருந்த பெரும் தமிழ் அணங்கே தமிழ் அணங்கே உன் சீரிலமை திரும்பியந்த செயல் மறந்த வாழ்த்ததுமே 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 தேங்க்யூ தேங்க்யூ பிருந்தா distinguished chief guest and resource person for the day mr manu mangattu venerable members of the management madam principal vice principal program coordinator participants and dear colleagues it is a glorious moment to extend my warm wishes to you all pursuing research pursuing research and documenting it is of high relevance and significance in the present education scenario it is an important tool for building knowledge and facilitating learning in order to walk us through it we have with us mr manu mangattu research consultant and publishing expert who has a rich academic and research experience he has made illustrious con- contribution in the field of research mr manu mangattu is an english professor poet editor lyricist film critic research consultant and publishing expert he has published around 10 books 79 international research publications 97 academic papers and 20 edited volumes he serves as editor in various international journals and is on the syllabus revision and approval committees of many reputed universities mr mangattu has completed various ugc funded research projects he is a visiting faculty in various universities and has and also offers part time guide guidance to research scholars in india and across the globe over and above his endless achievements and credentials Ms., uh, mr manu mangattu is well known and loved for his friendly demeanor and down to earth approachability thank you sir for your presence here today we hope that this research workshop title unveiling the nuances of research publication will not only help us to understand the requisites of publication but also eliminate the anxieties of publication we are confident this workshop will enable us to develop a love for research and gauge and seize the best of research opportunities it will provide an enrichment and exercise for the mind to succeed in any venture related to research i now call dr santosh mehta head and assistant professor department of english to deliver a special lecture A very good afternoon to our honored guest, Dr. Manu, my colleagues of English department, and all the participants of this workshop. A hearty welcome to all. You all would agree that there is a great relevance to research publication in higher education. Publishing provides a communication channel 
for researchers within a field, a repository of important research efforts and a recognition mechanism for institutions. Apart from ensuring an in-depth knowledge over a topic, research papers also contribute to the world of knowledge. We are really very fortunate to have Dr. Manu Amitstas, who himself is a living repository as far as, far as research and publication is concerned. I now hand over the session to our esteemed resource person. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants, dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, students, research scholars from all over the country. Really delighted uh, to meet you all at the you know, mid noon. Uh, I hope you have had a good lunch. Else, you will have your lunch while the lecture is underway. That's fine. Uh, it's food for thought and it's also food for our belly. Now, my dear friends, um, you know, this lecture, this workshop, the search workshop is titled. Um, you know, unveiling the nuances of research publication. And I'm very happy that this, uh, the organizers of this conference, they have been very, very clear regarding what they expect from this workshop. It was communicated very clearly, very lucidly to me that we aren't, you know, we have had a lot of workshops and events on research writing. Now we need something concrete on the search publication. Many of us are struggling and a lot of us have many myriad questions, doubts. We need a lot of clarification and hence this lecture. So we will be focusing entirely on the search publication and hopefully that is unveil. Uh, it is unveil. I don't know whether there is a veil as well, W-H-A-L-E veil. Um, because research sometimes uh, feels like a way, you know, a, a monstrous presence that, uh, you know, that stands as an obstacle in our way to our dream, realizing our dreams, realizing our potential. So let us look at research publishing and let us try to unveil and, you know, bust some myths of research publishing. My dear friends, in this lecture, first, I will give you an overview of the research situation where I will uh, take instances from STM report to tell you why and how it becomes so difficult for people, especially from arts and humanities, to publish their articles in reputed peer reviewed journals, UGC. Scopus, DOAJ, ABDC, whatever it is, why is it so difficult? And then uh, I will I will take you through some of the major um, you know listings, some of the major uh, journal platforms, and I will also tell you a few things about the major publishers. And then I will move on to the major discussion of this uh, lecture, where I would take you through six different stages, six step by step, I would be taking you through the six stages that a manuscript undergoes before it becomes a published research paper. And then we will have a, hopefully, uh, we will have a good interaction, we will have some questions and answers. Now, to begin, let's think of an imaginary situation. Though this is research, Thus, this lecture is about research. We are not about research. We are human beings. We are about imagination, emotion, heart. So let, let's think of an imaginary situation. You get appointed, you know, suppose you got appointed as an assistant professor in a college. Now, considering the prevailing situation in our country, it is most often an imaginary situation only. So that way too, it makes a lot of sense to keep it as an imaginary situation that you got appointed as an assistant professor in a college. You are so happy. You are so relieved that your years of toil, sweat, perseverance have finally borne fruit. The first day in your college, the first day, 
you know, uh, you apply some fragrance and you uh, put on your best dress. It's like preparing for the first night. You, you get ready for college and you reach the college. Wow, what a wonderful ambience. My first day at college and I'm full of hope that I'm going to make it a big thing. You know, uh, I will make it big. I will make it large. I'm very sure. And uh, what, you, what would you do? You go and meet the principal. And of course, uh, you, you, you greet him with the best smile you can summon and you are genuinely happy and after a few a few questions and you know friendly deliberations the principal asks you a very strange question my dear friend which toothpaste do you use oh, toothpaste. do i have a problem with my teeth why is he asking sir i use uh, you know a dabber mess walk i use patanjali I use Patanjali, I do use Dabar Meswa. Principal has a worried look on his face. He asks, why? Sir, I like this paste. It's, it's good for my gums. It's good for my teeth. And uh, this is something that my doctor has prescribed. So I thought I would use it. But, but my dear friend, no, 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 no. You should use Sensodyne. You should use Petsodem. You should use Closet and Colgate not dabber miswork not patanjali but sir our prime minister is telling us that we have to think about atma nirpar karat sensodyne pepsodyne colgate uh, close up they are made abroad shouldn't be atma nirpar sir ye aam aadmi ka adhikar hai to choose the paste and that i wish yeah but no more questions you must use sensodyne or colgate or closet or pepsodent if you wish to have an api score on the papers. oh this is going to affect my career okay sir sure 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 fine i'm confused i say yes at noon so you you have had your first lecture and the students were happy uh, to see you at noon you went outside after your lunch and you drank sugar cane juice from a street side vendor and you feel so heavenly so so refreshed sugar cane juice now by the time you reach uh, your seat there is a notice on your table it says meet the hod so you immediately go and uh, meet your hod he has summoned you he says our cctv footage tells us that you have gone to a street side shop to have sugar cane juice. Yes, sir, it was so refreshing. Sorry, I forgot to bring one for you. Tomorrow I will definitely bring one for you. No, no, no. It's not about me drinking sugar cane juice or anything. But it is against the policies of our college. It is against NARC rules. It is against our affiliation policies that we, we are drinking sugar cane juice. No, we cannot do that. See, my dear friend, you are a newcomer, so I understand it's fine, but don't repeat it. Next time onwards, you have to drink Pepsi, you have to drink Coca Cola, you have to drink this and this soft drinks only, not sugar cane juice. Have we landed in the wrong place? Why are these people speaking such things anyway? Now, the first months in the college meanders to a close and you have received your first salary wow you're so happy the first salary in your life you buy some fresh clothes for your parents for your uh, gurus and you're so happy and it was a long cherished dream to have a good smartphone with good camera so you buy a, a, a samsung smartphone what's 25k 25,000 rupees you bought a samsung smartphone now they will not have a problem because it is samsung they shouldn't be having any problem i hope it's it's uh, you know costly as well and i buy another phone because i you know i find it good to have another phone with a keypad because i'm not very comfortable using touch phone for calling the network isn't great either so i buy an ordinary keypad phone worth 1500 as well or you buy next day you go to college with these two phones and by evening the college administrator summons you 
we have a list of companies he says we have a list of companies where, from where you have to purchase we know that you have purchased from amazon uh, these two mobiles one samsung and the other a local phone worth 1500 now you cannot do this this is a reputed institution but sir i'm using this smartphone see it, it has all the facilities it is such a good phone so what is the issue it is it is very good why can't i use this phone no my friend you cannot do this this is a reputed institution this this you know we are trying to have a plus uh, plus or, or or a star grading and so we cannot afford such lapses oh this is a lapse but isn't it my personal choice you no 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 you have to buy high-end top tier fonts where you can do photoshop and adobe premiere pro oh my goodness i don't know sir i honestly i have heard about uh, photoshop but I know very little about Adobe Premiere Pro and I not, don't use any of these anyway. I am a simple person. I just take the uh, form to play uh, some games and WhatsApp and Facebook and that's it. I'm just an English professor. I just know anything else. I don't know much about Adobe or anything. I just use uh, form to form make phone calls and text messages, some social media. No, my friend, you are totally mistaken. I think you are, you don't know about the policies of this institution. This is a reputed college, not like some X, Y, Z that you will find. And, oh, now I get you, sir. You, are, you people are earning commission from these pawn companies, right? The administrator is baffled. They say, no, no. My dear friend, don't mis misunderstand me. It is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. This is a good college. This is a good college, reputed college. And why we are doing this is, this is what other reputed colleges in India are all doing. This is exactly what others are doing. It is very important for our NAC ranking that we use this smartphone, that we use uh, this juice, that we drink this juice, that we use this toothpaste, these are all part of the policies that are followed by all the reputed colleges in India. And that is why they are getting high grades, NAC ranking. You know, they, there are different uh, criteria, ranking criteria. So you have to use a form where you can use Adobe Premiere Pro. Because see, this is an you know, engineering, if it is an engineering college, they will say, see, our students are uh, all engineers. So you should definitely know to use Adobe Premiere Pro. Without Adobe Premiere Pro, you cannot survive. Whether you use it or not, the facility should be there on your phone. I hope you understand what I am telling you. This is what is happening with journal publication. We, teachers and students and research scholars from arts and humanities, we are told to publish in journals that have nothing to do with arts and humanities, we are asked to pay one like 50,000, 25,000 to publish our article in their journal. And, and we have to spend a lot of money. And you know, sometimes our management is also very cooperative. They will even reimburse us. There are many colleges, I know many colleges in our country, which are ready to reimburse. Suppose you get your article published in a Scopus Index journal and you had to pay 25,000 for it, just show them the bill and they will reimburse the 25,000 to you because your Scopus publishing uh, decides the ranking that this college is going to have in the next NAC visit. And if it is an engineering college, they will tell you to publish in top tier one, two, three journals. If it is a management and business, uh, you know, MBA, such colleges, they will tell you to publish in ABDC, Australian board, you know, you have to publish in those journals. And to the best of our knowledge, we know that there are no arts and humanities journals in any of these lists. So how will we get our articles published in this? Now, is there a lack of communication between what, lack of clarity, lack of, you know, understanding between what we are thinking and what, what we people are going through and what the authorities are thinking? Why aren't people aware of what arts and humanities is 
and why arts and humanities should be treated differently from sciences and social sciences. We cannot, if we go and publish, suppose uh, I check the best score, best journal in the world, but just journalist, and I find a journal titled Nature. It has 43 as its impact factor, wonderful journal, probably one of the best journals in the world. So I think that I'm so interested in nature. So definitely I would write a paper on Wordsworth as the high priest of nature and send it to nature. Now it says nature, right? Will they accept it? No. The journal Nature is all about science and technology. It has nothing to do with Wordsworth or his, uh, you know, pantheism or whatever he is doing. We will not get it published because that is totally different. So this is the problem that we are facing. Now let us try to just contextualize it a bit. There is something called STM. You might have heard if you are in an engineering college, if you are working in a commerce college, not an arts, art, science, science or a government college. If that is the case, you might definitely have heard about STM. It's a word that is frequently used. They will tell you there is this thing called STM review report. STM stands for the Association of Scientific, Technical and Medical Publishers. Now, what is this STM? It is the leading trade organization trade organization not non-governmental not non for non-profit not academic but leading trade organization for academic and professional publishers worldwide you know and it subsumes elsevier scopus all these big players now according to the stem report of 2021 that was the latest report uh, and the report has a special uh, page devoted entirely to India because it's a big market. And this is, I am just quoting a sentence from the STM report. It says, according to the STM report 2021 on India, it says, the market in India, the market, it's not the journal or academic uh, field, nothing. The market in India is growing strongly and there is a high output of good quality scientific papers, but the percentage of articles published in so-called predatory journals is alarmingly high. And, 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 and quoting again, India is notable for a strong domestic research. They say something uh, pacifying, they say something good and then they will say something bad. That's the, you know, that's how we have to you know, pacify people. India is notable for a strong domestic research base, but despite its volume, it has yet to sustain high citation impact across the breadth of its research portfolio. Now, what it says is we people are not getting citation scores and uh, citation indices. We people are not able to get our articles published in top tier journals. We people are not, you know, there is a lot of quantity, but there is a lack of quality. This is what the STM report says. And it says that there are 48,000, roughly 48,000 plus scholarly journals in the world. Oh my goodness. I can, I just want one publication or two publications, 48,000 journals, wow, lot of journals, 48,000 scholarly journals in the world, but arts and humanities, according to this particular report itself, arts and humanities is the discipline with the, with the least percentage of journals, that is only 5% of these 48,000 plus journals are from arts and humanities. If you do the basic calculation, it will come to 2,400 journals. Now, fine, you know, I don't need 48,000, 2,400 journals will do. It, it, it will serve my purpose, will it? Now, what is this arts and humanities? Is it just literature and English and linguistics and language and literature? No, subjects within arts and humanities are more than a hundred call it language, call it literature, philosophy, religious studies, anthropology, linguistics, history, theater, art history, classical studies, music, creative writing, psychology, sociology, cultural studies, gender studies, jurisprudence, archaeology, 
cultural anthropology ethics ethnic studies folklore history visual culture politics international relations development studies journalism media and what not so there are more than a hundred disciplines within arts and humanities so if we take the average if we take the average total for 2400 journals and in arts and humanities we have a more than a hundred disciplines let's go more than an average let's say that we have more journals to publish so what it means is the number of journals we have or the number of choices we have to publish our articles is limited to less than 50 journals less than 50 good quality journals are there in arts and humanities then what about the thousands of journals we hear about we get a lot of emails right all of them have something to do with language and literature what are those journals they are they are you know they are a family called predators they are a family called predators and in that family you will find fake journals you will find duplicate journals you will find cloned journals predatory you know they are the predators and if you publish you lose your money you lose your article and you lose your name uh, it's a loss loss situation so thousands of other journals now to find this 20 or 30 good journals we have to browse through thousands of fake journals and if rumors are to be believed google scholar indexes 1.5 lakh journals google refuses this but if rumors are to be believed google scholar indexes one you know 1.5 lakh journals now according to official data there are only 48000 plus journals so where are these who are these one lakh plus journals that google scholar additionally indexes well it's anybody's guess but you know there are a lot of fake players out there lot of fake players out there so uh, if you take the case of india roughly on an average considering the stm estimate that there are it says there are 252 researchers per million citizens of india if there are 1 million citizens in india of them 252 people will be serious researchers who publish in serious journals serious researchers so if you calculate things thus there are a total of 350,000 active journals in India. Suppose the population of India is pegged at 140 billion. Let's say 350,000 active researchers in India. Of these 350,000 active researchers in India, 1.5 lakh researchers are from arts and humanities, whereas 2 lakh researchers are from sciences and social sciences which means in arts and humanities, if you divide it and, and bring it to a more understandable range, in arts and humanities, for 1.5 lakh researchers, we have 2,400 journals, which means per 1,000 active publishing researchers, we have only 16 journals, 16 journals per thousand active publishing researchers whereas in sciences and social sciences 46000 journal options are there for two lakh researchers which means 230 journals per thousand active publishing researchers so look at the comparison whereas it is 16 journals per thousand for arts and humanities it is 230 journals per thousand for you know uh, sciences and social sciences and then what is happening we are asked to publish and have the same number of publications and have the same citation score and impact factor journals and everything as people from sciences and social sciences it's like telling you that you have to use not Dabur toothpaste, but you have to, to you have to use Pepsodent. You have to use Colgate because that suits our our institutional interests. Where will we 
Where will we publish our articles, my dear friends? What will we do? What is happening to us? What is happening to arts and humanities? What is happening to our academic dreams, aspirations? What is happening to whatever we had in mind when we started doing our BA program in English language and literature? Is it what we deserve or is it what we anticipated? The American painter, artist, John Sloan once said, though a living cannot be made of art, art makes life worth living. Though a living cannot be made of art, art makes life worth living. Artist John Sloan. Now, this is what I want to, I want all of us to know. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Enjoy, at least enjoy what you are doing when you are thinking about research publication. It is this fact that art makes life worth living that has driven millions of students to get arts and humanities degrees. It has driven lakhs of researchers in our country to do PhD in arts and humanities, focusing their attention on literature, on poetry, on painting, on history. Though arts and humanities degrees may not offer as clear and as smooth a career path and as smooth a research route as the sciences, the wide ranging and transferable skills that we attain through our arts and humanities education will be more than enough to succeed in the professional world. Only that we need to know ourselves, only that we need to know that we shouldn't be competing with the wrong people. We shouldn't be competing with wrong yardsticks. We should be competing with our own yardsticks. We shouldn't be doing it for anyone else. Now, I know what you are going to say, sir, but survival. Survival is important. I need to publish, I need to submit my PhD. I need to get API score. My promotion is pending. I can soon become an associate professor, provided I get one article published in Scopus journals. Now, let us come to the reality. What are the classification of journals? So many people tell, ask me, sir, what is this tier one journal, tier two journal? What is this? top end journal our engineering college is telling us to publish in top tier journals or 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 you know top end journals this abc what is this abc i cannot find any abc in ugc so just let us just try to make a brief you know, you know i will give you a brief in, in two minutes i will tell you what are the different classification of journals so one there are journals which are not in any list, but still which are good, which are peer reviewed, which are good. And then there are journals which are not in any list, but still they are bad. That is the first category. The second category, you know, I, I'm speaking about journals in terms of the ease of publishing and increasing difficulty in publishing. So uh, all these fake journals and all this uh, unindexed journals will be easier to publish, but then uh, you may not be able to get any score for publishing in those journals. So the first step, the baby, the first baby step you can take is to get your article published in a UGC care listed journal. The prices are lower, the stakes are lesser, and you may be able to manage, even if you are not an extraordinary researcher, even if you are a beginner and novice, with some minor mistakes and some problems, still you may be able to get your article published in a UGC care listed journal. So that is the first, you know, the second one. And the third one, I would peg it as DOAJ, Directory of Open Access Journals. There, some journals are very easy to publish, some journals are slightly difficult to publish, but still on a level of ease, ease it is better than Scopus or any other journal. It is easier to publish. So I will suggest, not that I'm underestimating your ability, but research is one field, research publication is one field whether you, where you cannot spend a lot of time experimenting because we have only 60 or 65 years and maybe uh, Corona is telling us only 40 or 45 years. So we cannot try and experiment for 40 years and then, uh, you know, we will have, we will have uh, you know, Lily is put at our feet by the time uh, 
uh, we publish our article that we don't want. So try these things first before you go to talk in journals. Then the fourth one in the difficulty range would come the Scopus and WOS, you know, Web of Science listed journals. Now, all Web of Science listed journals are there in Scopus, but all Scopus journals are not there in Web of Science. In other words, Web of Science is a better pruned and more difficult to publish list than Scopus. And uh, with these, we have Elsevier. Scopus is connected with Elsevier, and Web of Science is connected with Clarivate Analytics. So publishing with them is considered difficult. Considered difficult, one, in terms of money, because the money for publishing ranges from zero publication, APC, article publishing cost uh, charge can range from zero to two lakh fifty thousand or three lakh rupees. These are the prices, actual prices in Scopus, DOAJ, I mean Scopus, you know, Web of Science journals. And then there is something called ABDC listed journals. Many people are asking us to publish in ABDC listed journals. Many colleges are telling us, but what are these? Australian Business Dean Council, that is the full form of ABDC. And my dear friends, it is almost next to impossible for even people from uh, business or management to get it, get their articles published in these journals because of the difficulty. And they are very good journals, very good journals, high end journals, but very difficult. And there, there is a sub classification as well. The least difficult among ABDC journals is C category. Then the second uh, next one is B category. Then we have A and then A star. A star is the most difficult. And if you look at the best business and management professors in our country, best professors, best researchers, even they may have at most one publication in A star or A uh, category journals belonging to ABDC listed journals. Now, many people ask me, sir, why are we able to publish in those journals? The simple reason is ABDC listing is for business and management journals. It is not for arts and humanities. So how can I go and publish my article in ABDC listed journals? Yes, I know your colleges are telling you to publish in ABDC listed because they either they don't know or they know, but they are not admitting this. We cannot, we cannot do that. And who are the major best publishers that you can uh, trust? Now, Elsevier, that is a controversial name because it is a business. Elsevier is a business which runs uh, Scopus and it's a business company just like any other you know apple or microsoft any company elsevier is a business so uh, elsevier is one publisher which is a leading publisher and it is considered you know reputed then uh, as far as we people are concerned arts and humanities people are concerned i would say taylor and francis else you know uh, springer sage wiley these four are stand out. These four are the best publishers that you can, and then they, you know, for example, Springer has more than 2000 journals, and many of them are journals where we can publish. Uh, Taylor and Francis have journals, has journals customized for arts and humanities. Wiley has, Sage has. So these are some options that we can explore. But if you are a beginner, aim for easier ones. Now, that's it. Now, the different stages that our manuscript undergoes before it becomes a research paper, a published research paper. This is what our lecture is all about. And this is what I'm going to discuss in the coming half an hour. The different stages my manuscript undergoes before it becomes a published article. I will tell you about six steps, six steps. First step is, writing the manuscript or preparing the manuscript and what is the manuscript let us call the final draft of our uh, article as the manuscript you know we will have a rough draft first draft second draft third draft finally we will have the final draft or the you know final final draft so this final final draft is called the manuscript manuscript and what are the components of a good manuscript? 
what are the components of a good research article? First, it should have a well-defined title. Since we are not thinking about research writing, I will not go into the details of any of this. These are things that we have discussed earlier in many other lectures. So I will just run through these things. First, we need a title, followed by we will need the name and designation of the author or authors that can be co-authors, but not many in parts and similarities, followed by article and uh, you know, followed by the abstract if, if required. And the abstract should have at least a problem statement, an indication of the methodology that you are using in your research paper, the major findings of your research, the principal conclusion, the no, main findings, and finally, the principal conclusion of your research. These four things must be there. There must be a problem statement. There must be a clear suggestion as to what methodology you will be using, what are your major findings, and your principal conclusion. This much at least should be there in your abstract. Follow it with your keywords. These are the labels that you give for your work. And don't give any, uh, any word that you find in your uh, article. Choose very clear, clear and you know, easy to understand, easily communicatable, searchable keywords, you know, preferably in noun form. That is the next thing. And then this is followed by the full text of the article, full text of our manuscript. So what all things should be there in the full script? First, we need to have an introduction. And in the introduction, we will have three subcategories, roughly. You know, there can be minor differences everywhere, not an issue. But in your introduction, you can have three subcategories. You know, first, you have to establish a broad category. You, you can make a little bit of generalizations. You can review previous research. And you are, you know, the first paragraph, suppose we are doing something on let's say medical humanities, something on medical humanities. So the first paragraph can begin with a sentence, something like the 20th, 21st century has witnessed a boom in pandemic literature. Pandemic literature. 21st century has witnessed a boom in pandemic literature. And we are telling about the corona and the epidemic and what happened. All these things we will be say, you know. And then establishing the next thing to do in introduction is to establish your narrow category. Here you can present your, you know, uh, counter arguments. But, but, you know, it's like, however, but, you know, uh, you say something like, however, you, first you said 21st century witnesses a lot of pandemic literature. In the second paragraph, in the second part of your introduction, you will be saying, however, it remains unclear why medical humanities isn't pursued with as much of a fervor by your researchers? Because you know, medical humanities is some, you know, for our understanding, medical humanities is something that looks at patient-doctor relationship, and we are we have a lot more patients. T P A P A T A E N T S. We have far lesser patients, but we have a lot more patients now. Uh, patients uh, uh, these days because of corona and other problems. So medical humanities should have been a very seriously looked at discipline, but it isn't. So this is the problem that you have found, a research gap. You are raising a research question. That is the second part, establishing the narrow subcategory. And then the third part of your introduction will be presenting the purpose of your study. You will announce your study. What is it? What is the present study about this? The present study aims to look at or explore the reasons behind the failure of medical humanities to become a major academic discipline, despite uh, this, despite the rush and the rise of pandemic literature in that way. You know, something like that. So you are announcing the present study, its principal findings, and indicating the structure of your you know, upcoming research in this particular paper itself. So that is your introduction. Follow it up with the detail, or at least a cinema, depending on the size of your paper and the scope of your research, do a literature review. At least a brief literature review would be ideal. It's, it's necessary. Yeah. Unless you have so pressed for space, 
don't ignore this part called literature review because if you don't have a literature review how will you establish your research gap it's very difficult then explain your methodology the next step would be to explain your methodology how will you collect your data process of data collection techniques for analyzing your data what would, or, or if it is a theoretical paper uh, that what is the theoretical what are the theoretical underpinnings what theory are you going to apply to look at this particular phenomenon uh, if it is data collection you can use sentences like the data for this study um, uh, were collected by interviewing medical practitioners in different uh, hospitals in, in 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 a particular state or whatever and then after methodology, what will happen? You will be listing your results. You will be presenting your results, not discussing. You first, you present your results. What are, what are the results of your ana analysis? What are the results of your data collection? Follow that with a discussion. And this discussion should also, like introduction, this discussion should also have three parts. First, an introduction then an evaluation and then a conclusion this conclusion is for discussion itself and introduce you you know in the introduction to the discussion you will review the findings you will discuss the outcomes and you may take a claim uh, you may say you may use sentences like uh, the findings of this study clearly suggest that show that something like that so and then you will evaluate so analysis explanations what are the implications of this these findings one ex, you know sentences like one explanation for this failure in medical humanities is you know uh, this sort of sentences and then follow it up with a conclusion uh, in this conclusion you are not concluding the entire article but you are concluding the discussion and in this uh, discussion what are we doing we are discussing the limitations the recommendations and the scope for further research and follow it up with the conclusion to your research article conclude your research article finished this is the research article and at the end of your research article what is what else should we have we should have a reference it's a must we should have a list of references or work cited or bibliography whatever you want to go give ideally it should be titled work cited or references not bibliography because in a research paper we may not be able to include a detailed bibliography now your manuscript is ready right you have prepared your manuscript now take it you know have a relook at your manuscript what all things should it have it must be original first and foremost it must be original second it must be plagiarism free third it must have proper citations proper in-text citations then fourth it must identify and address a proper research gap fifth it must have a clear and proper research methodology sixth it must contribute to existing research seventh you know this is something not always there but still uh, you must be aware and you must sometimes address the ethical issues involved and find eight your article must be written in a proper language in a good academic error-free language make sure that these things are properly done now your research article is ready we have to publish right step two step one preparing the manuscript step two what is it selecting a journal selection of journal we have to select a journal so that we can publish this particular article in that particular journal how will we select this journal now my dear friends people think that writing the article is the most important and the most difficult and the most time consuming thing once it is written i just put it for publication finished no this is the most difficult part selecting a journal is the most difficult part these days it requires a lot of in-depth research probably selecting a journal requires more research than writing a research paper okay so first and foremost when you select a journal you must what you must do is 
you must select a journal that is from a similar discipline or a similar area of research. This is very important. Don't send your article to a journal that has nothing to do with your area of research. It must be as close to your area of research as possible. Secondly, you know, your research, uh, the journal that you choose must be genuine. You must not, you must make sure that it is not a cloned journal. Cloned, it, it must, it will look, its website will look like the original journal but it is cloned, it's just a copy. And uh, UGC care, if you go to GoGC care website, you can find the list of cloned journals, but also, you know, keep your eyes and ears open and check and look at predatory, you know, what are the practices used by predatory and cloned journals. And you have to make sure that you make, that you uh, go through the website and ensure that this is not a cloned or a duplicated journal. Make sure that it is not, it is a non predatory journal. Predatory, you know, I, I'm not going into those details. So how to know whether it is a predatory, I will come to that later if time permits. Then make sure that it is financially viable. What is the APC, article publishing charges for that particular journal. Now, uh, here you have to take into consideration many other factors as well. Suppose you are an independent researcher doing your PhD, you don't have any funding. So the entire money has to come from your pocket. So uh, we cannot publish in very you know, costly publishing things. We have to look for free journals. We have to look for journals that take only a nominal fee. But if you have institutional funding or reimbursement, which many colleges are providing, which is completely wrong, by the way, because we are feeding some capitalist trader, you know, some company abroad, we are feeding them and our institutions are paying us money so that we can pay them money. And uh, there are so many, you know, um, loopholes in all these things. So it's not proper, but unfortunately, there is an unhealthy competition going on between the institutions for grading. And so in this fight for grades, what institutions do is this is good for us. You know, as individuals, as researchers, it is good for us that our institutions and you may not know your institution is providing this funding. So you go and inquire with your institution if you are a researcher or if you are a research scholar or if you are a teacher, inquire with your institution whether they have a funding system, a reimbursement system where the amount you have to pay to the journal will be reimbursed by the institution. You know, it makes our job a lot easier you know, um, a lot of ethics can spoil the growth. Now, uh, reimbursement or, or any scope for, you know, some journals offer concession. So, for example, uh, they will say uh, there is there are concessions or scholarships available for students from third world countries, Asian countries, African countries, you know, look for such options. And still, if you cannot manage, look for journals, let take lesser money. You know, there are free journals as well, but not many. So, you know, we have to strike the right balance between how much we have to pay and, and what is a good journal. This is the thing. You must make sure that your journal you have chosen has a genuine ISSN number, and you must ensure that it is peer reviewed, preferably double blind peer reviewed. Also take a look at the time lag. All good journals will take a minimum of two to three months at least. Many good journals take four to five years to get your article published. So if you have if you have your PhD thesis ready and you have to publish your article, don't go for a journal that will take years. But I will say that that is not a bad thing. It is a good thing that a journal takes a lot of time. It indicates quality. It indicates quality. If a journal takes a lot of time to review your article and it is providing feedback, it's, it's an indication that it's a good journal. Then, so time lag you have to take into consideration. So until now, we aren't thinking about whether it is UGC care or Scopus listed or Web of Science. All these things comes come next. Then think about it. What is it that I require here? The is it is it is not a matter of anything else but our personal requirement see this indexing what does your management require what does your institution require or what is the requirement for your phd 
that should be the criteria for you to decide whether you should publish in a UGC care listed journal or a Scopus journal or a web of science journal. If you have to publish in a Scopus journal, then you don't have a choice, right? So this is how you have to choose and what to avoid, avoid poor quality journals, how to know which is poor quality, look at the language of the journal, look at the language of the articles published in the journal, look at their policies, their poor journals, if, if it is bad, then uh, avoid non peer reviewed journals. Most importantly, avoid journals without ISSN number. There are even journals that will tell you that we have ISBN number. No journal can have an ISBN number. So make sure that uh, it has a proper ISSN number. Then avoid journals that publish overnight. They tell you we will publish it tomorrow, next week. Within 13 days, your article will be published. Clear indication that it is a fake and cloned and predatory journal. Don't go with such journals uh, at least a month at least a month i would say that is a must and there are journals that will predate your publication your publication will be you are you have written the paper today and you submit it tomorrow but your paper will be published yesterday you know in 2021 2020 so avoid such journals avoid predatory journals avoid journals that don't follow you know, traditional or standard publishing procedures. And also avoid journals that ask for immediate payment because all good journals will ask you for payment only after your article is accepted for publication. Until then, the review process, everything is free. You don't have to pay anything. So there is no submission fee before uh, your article is ready for publication. That is when good journals will ask for their payment. So if you are asked to first pay and then submit your journal article, it means that your article will anyway be published, but it also means that this journal is a fake journal. And so the chances are that this journal will soon go out of UGC care list or Scopus list, and then you will lose your article as well. So don't do that. Make sure you publish in good journals. This is the second step, selecting a good journal. Step three. You have to customize your manuscript as per the selected journal format. Now remember this, each journal has, each journal is unique and each journal has its own sets of uh, publishing or, or article submission guidelines. So go to the website of the uh, journal and follow the author or the submission guidelines verbatim. It has to be religiously followed. There will be things like font size, font type, you know, spacing, line spacing, citation style to be used, um, you know, uh, then referencing system to be used, MLA, APA, hardware, which style system you should use, how should your paragraphs be aligned, what should you do with your tables and figures if you have, whether you can have end notes or foot notes. Uh, uh, what is the word limit, whether you should use British spelling or American spelling, so many things are very clearly laid out in uh, order or submission guidelines, go through them and follow them religiously. The article you follow, you prepared following the submission guidelines of one journal will never fit into another journal submission guidelines. So if you have prepared one journal and submitted it in, to a journal and it got rejected, and suppose you, you are submitting it to another journal, make sure that you go through the submission guidelines given by that journal. Only then you will be able to uh, make it a proper submission. Otherwise, there is something called on desk, desk review, desk review, desk review, the first review. On desk review itself, your paper, paper will get rejected. You know, not they are not even looking at the content. If you haven't followed the guidelines, outright rejection. No excuses. If you don't follow the guidelines, your paper will be rejected. So customize your, this is a very important step. Many, many of us forget to do this. Customize your manuscript as per the format or the submission guidelines given by the journal that you have selected for publication or submission. Then fourth step, submission of the manuscript to the selected journal. Now you have to submit, right? We have prepared everything, we have selected the journal, uh, we have customized it, but you have to submit. 
again go through the submission guidelines is it an online journal or an offline journal is it a print journal or a uh, you know uh, e journal and whether the submission should be made online or should i send send it as a uh, you know as a print out should i send it by post how to send it how to um, you know submit my paper should it be uploaded on the website some journals would ask you to upload on the website if you email it they will reject your uh, submission some journals would suggest that you email it so and then uh, there are other questions as well should you register if 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 a, if a journal has a website post probably they will ask you to sign up beforehand so if the submission deadline is uh, you know uh, 18th of may and today you have completed everything and immediately you are going to uh, submit and then you find that you have to sign up there could be a lot of hassles you might find a lot of difficulties in uh, signing up so make the signing up and all other things beforehand it is free you, nobody is going to charge you anything for signing up so sign up and create your account you know id login id and password and then prepare all these things once you find out the journal itself do all these things then check whether there is a fee how much is the fee is it affordable how to pay you know how to pay is very difficult sometimes you know most often why people fail to submit in time would be they will say you know there is this thing called submission guidelines and uh, click here to submit that much we see now we are not submitting here because we are not ready uh, so uh, 18th is the 18th of may is the deadline today is 17th of may and tonight i am going to submit everything is ready my paper is ready my money is ready and they say you have to you, you can make the payment by clicking on this button here you click on that button and that they will say pay through paypal or payoneer I don't have PayPal. I don't have Payoneer. I have credit card. I have debit card. I have this. I have that. I have Google Pay. But they are not taking any of this. So I am in a problem. And this delay would cost you a paper. This delay would cost you. So we have to be very. We have to have a very clear understanding of all these minor things. Is there a covering letter requirement? Then we have to prepare the covering letter. And if your covering letter is poorly worded. that tells them that okay this person doesn't have any language skills so if the paper is well written that means that probably it is copied probably it is plagiarized probably somebody else wrote it you know all these problems so covering letter uh, attaching how to attach the payment receipt what is the deadline for submission it should there be abstract uh, how should i submit as what should be the format in word or pdf or both to whom it should be addressed so now you are writing a covering letter you cannot write to whomsoever it may concern uh, to x y z no you have to write you have to know to whom it should be addressed and then there are a host of additional details that you may have to get ready before the submission process so think that you are booking a tatkal ticket you know how difficult it is uh, maybe um, irctc is probably one of the best websites where you can test your patience so uh, booking a tatkal ticket on ircdc is probably uh, uh, you know you know how difficult it is think about that before you get ready for submission and you will be in good stead so you should have this I, i will tell you about 13 things that you must uh, prepare in advance before you are ready to submit your paper 13 things not all 13 things will be applicable to every journal but i am telling you i am all inclusively i am telling you the possibilities first one you need to have your manuscript second one if you are using images in the uh, manuscript you may have to save it in an in a separate folder uh, and the num you should title it according to the name or number given within the um uh, within the article because they might ask you to upload these things separately second thing third one ethical considerations for example contribution of if there are three authors what exactly is the contribution of this author what exactly is the contribution of this author that those things should be mentioned it's an ethical practice if there are any acknowledgement that is an ethical practice how somebody can access some data for example you say that i have collected this data but you haven't appended this data to your paper but somebody may be interested in seeing this data as well so you should explain 
how they can access this data. You, may, you can upload it in some Google Drive or something and make it accessible. So that is the third thing. Fourth, if there is any conflict of interest, you, you have to clearly mention. Five, you have to mention the details of funding received. Now, uh, in, uh, in, on the, in the 13th hour, you won't be able to prepare all these things. So get, get things in, these things ready in advance. Then sixth one, whether this paper is part of an ongoing project or thesis or anything. Mention that clearly. Seven, prepare a covering letter. Eight, uh, have a declaration of ownership or uh, originality. Also something like it has not been published or submitted elsewhere, that those kinds of declarations are required. Sometimes they will have the form. Sometimes they will ask you to write it down on a piece of paper and uh, uh, upload the document. And then copyright details. Copyright form must be signed by all authors if it is co-authored. Then uh, many journals these days ask us to submit the plagiarism report. We may be asked to check it on Turnitin or Urkund, and we must upload the plagiarism report along with uh, our paper. So that should be ready. Then uh, some journals will ask you to write in about the author, professional details, proof of your uh, you know, institutional affiliation, all these things. So these things should be ready. And some journals might ask you to upload your abstract separately. That should be ready. And finally, if you are nominating any re reviewers, some journals would ask you to nominate some reviewers. You, first, you must first take their permission. Take their permission beforehand, because if they don't know, they may say that, I don't know, I'm not going to review. Take their permission beforehand. But then you have to give the name and details and contact details of your reviewers clearly. So these many things should be clearly laid out, ready before you are ready to publish and you know, submit your paper for publication. And now we submit the article to the journal. You know, we are completing the fourth process. Now it's two minor steps remain. You submit the article to the journal. Is it published? No. Submission is not publication. You submit it only to be evaluated. Now, we move to the fifth step. Step five, response from the journal. The first response from the journal would be an acknowledgement letter or an acknowledgement email. Most good journals would send it readily. You know, within 48 hours, you will get an acknowledgement email or an acknowledgement letter. But also think, consider things like holidays and things like that. And don't, if, if you don't get an immediate acknowledgement letter, don't panic, wait. You can send a reminder after two or three days, but wait, it's fine. They may be taking some time. Now you get the acknowledgement letter. What should, what, the, what should you do next? The second step is to wait, to wait. The third step is to wait more. The fourth step is to continue waiting. The fifth step is to learn a new skill, to learn a new sport, because you have a lot of time and nothing is happening. The sixth step is to practice breathing exercises, because you need a lot of patience. So practice breathing exercises. The seventh step would be to learn meditation, because you need patience and your BP would be shooting, all those problems will happen. So practice meditation, yoga is recommended. And the eighth step would be if you are having panic attack and other problems because there is no response from the journal, even after a year, consult a psychiatrist. At eighth step, consult a psychiatrist. Master your patience. Become a yogi. Ninth step, it will be two years by now. Forget about the submission. And the tenth step, recall the submission when you finally receive a response from the journal. Anybody who has submitted to a good journal would know that this is actually what happens. It's fine. It's fine. It may take years. Honestly telling you, it may take years for you to receive a response from a good journal because they receive a lot of submissions. And the types, there are three types of responses you may receive from a good journal, you know, from any journal, but normally three types of responses. The first one is the least likely, which is that your article is accepted. Jump up, enjoy, celebrate, fireworks. That is the least likely. But it can happen, rarely. You know, anything can happen in this world. So even your paper may get accepted, least likely. The most likely thing is, they will say your paper is rejected. 
most often this rejection message might come a little earlier than this acceptance step. Then another thing not very common is they will ask you to modify and it would include things like they will ask you to provide additional information. They will ask you to provide clarification. Fortune favors the brave. Now, if they are give, if they are giving you a second chance, rework, then do more work, then network, then overwork, then homework, then work from home. Whatever you do, get your paper in proper shape or follow the recommendations. Be polite. You don't have to follow all the recommendations that the reviewers have given. But you know, if you are not following a recommendation, you have to explain why and be very polite. Uh, you don't have to be very, you know, obsequious and subservient, you know, like a slave, uh, not like that, but be polite and courteous in your replies and make the necessary changes. And this modification process can go on and on and on until your paper is accepted or rejected. And don't worry if your paper is rejected because Rejection is a learning curve. It's okay to be rejected. I have an experience of an article being rejected 16 times and there is no happy ending to this story. I stopped sending it to the journal after 16 years and four years. 16 rejections and 16, not 16 years, after 16 rejections, uh, no, modification requests and four years. So it happens with everyone. And to give you an insight into why papers are generally rejected, I have collected some stat inside statistics drawn from Scopus Index and UGC Care Listed Journals. Inside statistics: Why many of many articles are rejected? Nine reasons. I will just tell you what are the nine reasons. Now, this is very important because understand that you know we may think that our paper may get rejected because of such and such reason but that may not always be true this is statistical data and i am giving you the percentages as well so most number of you know if 100 percentage 100 right so uh, out of 100 26 papers are rejected 26 percent papers get rejected because of fabrication what is fabrication manipulation Manipulation of what? It can be manipulation of data or it can be manipulation of language. Manipulation of data, you provide wrong information uh, or somebody has written a thesis, you just change the numbers and change some things and uh, you submit it as a new thesis. You know, new findings and all. The only thing is you have just changed the numbers and uh, if it is applied to, for example, uh, English speaking skills uh, of uh, English second language, English as a second language learners in uh, Karnataka, a, a person studied this. So you are taking the same thing and you have rephrased it, but the essence of your thesis is um, the problems faced by learners in, instead of Karnataka, it becomes Mumbai. So that is something called fabrication, data fabrication. And then there is another thing called language fabrication. What is it? You use a paraphrasing software, you use synonyms, every word is uh, you know, right, right click on it on word and you take the synonym and it will look like a new language. It will not make any sense and it will look very much grammatically correct sentences. So this is fabricated. Uh, any paraphrasing software can do that. And so 26 percentage of papers get rejected because of fabrication. Then second one, 23 percentage of uh, 23 percentage of papers get rejected due to plagiarism and this plagiarism would include self plagiarism as well and here by self plagiarism i don't mean that you are intently intentionally copying something not like that but what is happening two things uh, happen most often um, you know uh, the self plagiarism you know that you know uh, that is coming only i'll tell you so the first thing say so first thing fabrication 26 percent second one plagiarism here plagiarism is not included because plagiarism is fourth on the list i will come to that later 23 percentage then third one submission errors 15 percentage 15 percentage papers are re uh, rejected because of errors in submission they don't even review the paper if you don't haven't followed the submission guidelines your paper will get rejected 
15 percentage of papers then fourth one is self plagiarism and self plagiarism accounts for 10 percent age of rejections now this is something we need to understand why does this happen there are two major reasons you know you may self plagiarize as well but there are two other you know not so non reasons one if you check your uh, article in a plagiarism checking software they may store it in their database if that happens when it is checked again for plagiarism it will show plagiarism so what will happen it will show that it was published earlier they will know sometimes they will know that this article was written by you yourself but there is no guarantee that it wasn't published because you know the uh, plagiarism checking software shows similarity so you yourself have uh, written it it will be considered as self plagiarism and then a major mistake that many indians commit is this they draw their uh, papers from their research thesis phd thesis many people get scot free because uh, they are not caught but it is not correct you, you have written a thesis you have done a phd and all the papers after that will be based on that phd some chapters some paragraphs will be rearranged and sending self plagiarism no don't do that then uh, fourth reason for rejection is unethical co-authoring earlier we said that you must uh, provide details of uh, authorship the contribution of each author now if you had providing the names of different co-authors for example uh, nowadays uh, nowadays what is happening is uh, you may get messages like there are option there are vacancies for second order third order fourth order fifth order sixth order seventh order for each order you have to pay 3000 so everybody is together sharing and nobody else has seen this paper probably the first order also has in seen the paper so one who pays the maximum money will become the first order so these things might get caught and this is what is known as unethical co-authoring and sometimes many of us have some have committed this error as well when a research scholar writes a paper and the research supervisor insists that his or her name should also be put on that paper not because he or she has done anything but simply because he is the supervisor or the uh, guide this is also unethical and if caught it will lead to rejection of the paper it completely then sixth reason is text duplication text duplication would mean um, repetition or paraphrasing or recycling same paper same paper uh, you know eco ecological concerns in uh, um, amidav ghosh novels now this is the same theme uh, ecological would mean nature in amidav ghosh novels and some new sentences this and that but no addition to existing knowledge recycling happens somebody has written this paper you have written it on your own after reading that paper this is recycling no new knowledge so text duplication this accounts for 7 percentage of rejections seventh one language issues we think that language issues are the reasons behind the rejection of many of our papers no language issues account for only 6 percentage of rejections methodology issues account for 4 percentage of rejections and others whatever else uh, together constitute 1 percentage of rejections keep this in mind because this will help you to stay clear of these mistakes now our fifth step is complete right at the end of this once your paper is accepted for publication now, now two things will happen one they will ask you to pay the article processing charges if any and two they will send you a copyright agreement form you have to submit these two things and finally step number 6 the publication the actual publication of the article now it has three steps one copy editing this is done by the journal itself we don't have to worry they have to put it in some shape they have to do the copy editing they have to do the formatting they have to you know page alignment and things like that all these things copy editing then there is something called proofreading who is proofreading you are it is you know the the final proof is good journals will send you and this is known as a galley proof g a l l e y galley proof they will send you a galley proof to ensure that everything is fine before it is finally published 
cross check thoroughly for any spelling or formatting or even typesetting errors, missing pages, missing contents, all these things. And you may be given a maximum of 48 hours to prove your uh, final uh, manuscript before publication. In publishing, uh, so this is what happens. And the final step would be, if it is a print journal, printing the article into uh, the journal. And if it is an online journal, posting uh, your article onto, onto the website. This is the final process. And then they will inform you that your article is published. And they will give you a download link or a website link or if it is print, they will give, tell you how to buy a copy of the journal or they will send you a complimentary copy or volume. And there you will have all the details like page numbers, DOI, Scopus, ID, you know, researcher ID, all those things you will be able to create then and there. And now every step, all six steps are completed. And now what can we do? We can heave a sigh of relief. Not only because we have completed submitting the paper, but also because we have completed this lecture. Thank you for patiently listening to this lecture. Give two, three sighs of relief because it was a long lecture. Um, thank you for your patient listening. I would be happy to take your questions. You may have a lot of questions. I will be happy to take as many questions as the organizers would permit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And special thanks to the organizers for being so meticulous with everything. It was beautifully organized, very well communicated. I didn't have to worry about anything. Right through uh, the, all the stages, Shandini ma'am especially, was especially careful with everything, very meticulous, properly organized. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. As always, you have given us more than we bargained for. You have indeed clarified on various aspects of preparing our manuscript and successfully publishing it, retaining our sanity in the process. Due to paucity of time, we have now come to the end of the session. Any specific queries from the participants can be posted in our WhatsApp group and we'll try to get it answered by the resource person. So hope you are okay with it. Yeah. All fine. If you want, you can email me or message me as well, WhatsApp me as well. I will type my, uh, you know, contact details in the chat box here. Yes, sir. Yeah. yes. Of, of course, you okay. can contact Thank me you, sir. Yeah, the feedback link will be posted in the chat box. I request the participants to fill it in. Please double check your credentials as the information provided in the feedback form will be printed in the certificates. I now call Ms. Venolata, Assistant Professor of English, to propose the vote of thanks. Good day. On behalf of the Department of English of Sri Shankarla Sundarbhai Sashan Jain College for Women, I take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this workshop. At the outset, I thank our resource person, Mr. Manu Mangitu, this is consultant and publishing expert. We like to express our sincere thanks to you, sir, for giving an excellent and coverage in the area of research and publication. We are enlightened with your knowledge and presence, sir. Thank you for it. We are thankful to our management for giving us such an opportunity to dwell deep into the areas of educational research. We express our gratitude to Honorable Principal, Vice Principal, and Research Director for their motivation. A special thanks to the entire team for their unflinching support and coordination. No event can be successful without people who dedicate their resources and time to make sure everything is faultless. A very heartfelt thanks to all our participants for their active participation. With these warm words and a kind message, we move to the end of today's workshop. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Ms. Venalata. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, if the participants post their queries in our WhatsApp group, uh, I'll mail it to you, sir. I'll consult it and mail it to you so that we can get it answered. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you Thank all. You, sir. Thank you so much, sir.